Welcome to this first session after the keynote and the pre-note that I hopefully all of you were attending. Um, this session is about um, how we pitch at Drupal and how we pitch uh, to large enterprises and uh, how basically we create business value by using Drupal. So my name is Patti Sonja Breider, come from Iceland. Um, I have a bachelor in computer science. I have a master from Vienna here, the Technical University in uh, engineering management. I have two kids that get every year their Druid, uh, Druid uh, t-shirts here at the con. So if you have kids, meet the guys at the Druid and get a t-shirt for your kids. Uh, this is always a Christmas card every year. And I also have a husband and I've been doing Drupal since 2007. So since Drupal was version 5 and we basically did everything wrong back then, but we've learned a lot since then. So I own a Drupal shop in Frankfurt. Um, we also have employees actually around um, in Reykjavik. And as of the 1st of November, we will have an office in Conil in Spain. Yay, where we're going to do beach, code, beach coding. Uh, we are 18 people at the moment, but as of November, we will be 20 something. A uh, very international crowd speak 13 different languages. Uh, or th we have 13 different nationalities in our team. Um, but most important, we use distributions a lot and we contribute to the distributions. We use Drupal 8 mainly, except that the projects that we are actually uh, just maintaining. But we, since two years now, we only create Drupal 8 projects. Um, we are maintaining the DEGov distribution for the German government. We have a booth here too, so please come and visit us. We are partnering with ImageX on OpenEDU, which is a distribution for higher education. We are working with uh, the Thunder distribution and the Commerce guys. We launched the first web shop in 2000, now in, in April, in the beginning of April, in Commerce too. And we have done a couple of them since. Pretty, pretty good. I advise you also to go and meet them. But most important, I'm really involved in the community and uh, organize camps and organize local events, both in Germany and in Iceland. And one of, my, one of the highlights are probably the Northern Lights camp that was a little bit where people flew in from the States and flew in from the Europe or the, where we are now and they met in Iceland and did a lot of sprinting and we had a lot of fun there so we're going to do this again. But what am I going to be talking about? I'm definitely not going to be talking about Drupal, nor Drupal 7, nor 8, Symfony, open source, license fees or anything like that. The session is going to be about how enterprises or large organizations can create value by using Drupal and how we actually pitch this when we go to large organizations and how we, like this is basically our pitch that I'm going to be presenting. So I only have 20 minutes, so it's going to be a little bit quick, but I hope that I will at least be five minutes before I have an end to it so you can ask questions. So what do we mean by large organizations? Or, you know, that is like large companies, like for example, Burda Media in Germany, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. It's also about government, uh, universities. It's about agencies, marketing agencies that, um, that are always doing the same thing again and again and again. So the bottom line is, it's basically for companies or organizations that have very many web projects. And this is, uh, of course, happening all over in, in large organizations. So what are the problems that these companies and organizations, uh, enterprises, are actually having today? Uh, so I tried to make this slide nice. I couldn't because I have to say so much on it. So the problems that enterprises are having is that they have very many websites so it means they often have very many different technologies so they have like Drupal, WordPress, Sitecore, Joomla, Core Media, Adobe, homemade solutions, wow that is in Iceland, that is the thing in Iceland or was at least. So when you have very many technologies what do you then need to have? You have to have a different experts, you have to have different teams, different deployment mechanisms, different hostings, so these are all the problems that you have when you have very many large uh, web projects, or not even large, just in general, many web projects. So basically, you will need an expert for every single site that you are maintaining or creating. 
This causes high risk, high cost and burnouts. And this we've been seeing again and again. And therefore, I want to tell you about the example that, uh, as I said before, I come from uh, Reykjavik. And we are a country of 300,000 people and we are really good in football and soccer. Uh, so the city of Reykjavik, we have 120,000 people living there, and of which 10% work for the city of Reykjavik. Because the city of Reykjavik basically does everything. They take care of the schools and the kindergartens. So 10%, almost, of the people that live in Reykjavik, they work for the city. So let's look at that as an example and see how we can help them to create value for the city. This is the status quo, how it is today. They have 50 Drupal websites. They have 150 Joomla websites, 25 Content XSL websites, 25 Wix websites, 25 WordPress websites, and 25 sites made in some kind of a other system. So you can imagine the problems that you have if you're trying to maintain this. This is 300 websites. So they all, though, have one thing in common. They were all created, they were deployed, there is maintenance and bug fixing going on all the time, 300 times. So you can imagine what is the problem there. So how can we solve it? That's why we are here, right? So we can solve it by focus on one single technology. And that, is, that can be Drupal, that can be something else. But we decide to use Drupal because we think that Drupal uh, can really do that, plus the city of Reykjavik, they have said that they want to use open source technology. So let's look at this example a little bit differently. So imagine we have the 300 sites there on the right side, or from you guys on the left side. So every single website consists of four different layers, at least. I mean, this is just like, so we have in the base, we have the base system layer, that's a management, content management system that you're using. Then you have the core layer, and that is the core modules, the base theme, the, you know, the installer, so you have maybe created some kind of a blog or events or news. Then you have the context layer, so for example, when you're creating 120 websites for schools, you know, there are certain things that the schools needs, need, and there's something else that other uh, projects need, but you create that in the context layer. And then on top, you have the project layer. And this is the specific layer for your website. So this is how we like to like, look at it. Because when we analyzed all 300 websites, we noticed that there is so much stuff in common, at least from bottom and up. So how do we then do that? We create a distribution. So by creating a distribution or a puppy, is Dave in here? There was a nice uh, blog that he had about distributions. And what you basically do, you take these modules or elements and you pack them into something. So basically you take the bottom, we, we use Drupal 8, and we use Acquia Lightning on top of that. And this is just because we have looked at it and we have uh, seen that they have a lot of good stuff already in there, so we don't have to build that too. So we start like by clicking together the modules that we like and we use again and again and again. Then we take the core layer, we have the, the base theme, we have the, all, these, all these elements, so the blog element and the, the events and all that, and that we go on. So are you so far with me? Uh, just recently, there was a meetup in Boston where Dries was actually addressing, uh, let's make Distribution's great. And he said people don't really want to download all these different pieces and couple them together and figure out how to configure them and deal with maintaining them and upgrading them. Distributions can really reduce so many barriers to adoption. So by having a distribution, we can already have all this. We don't have to do it again. And our programmers, they also don't like doing these things again. I don't know how many of your programmers have created some kind of a news module on a website every single time. So let's now think about, so we're trying to create value. And one of the 
variables that we are using there is cost. So let's just imagine that we have an average price per site, 10,000 euros. That, not, that is not a lot of money. But let's just play with that number a little bit. So if we say, like, of course we know in the city of Reykjavik that we have very many sites that are really expensive and much more expensive than that. So let's just, but there's also very many landing pages that do not cost so much. So let's just use this example and you can use this number and you can put it up or down, depending on who, to who you're talking to. Let's then take the layers and just put 2,500 on each layer. You know, it would be interesting, and this is what we are thinking about, just try to see, like, what is the real relationship in each layer, but let's say that it's one-fourth. It means that for the city of Reykjavik and all other enterprises with this type of, of uh, web projects, they have spent three million euros on creating these websites. So 300 websites times only 10,000 euros. It's three million euros. That's a lot of money. And if you just put this number up to 20,000, you will have a lot higher number. So let's then try to look at it if we do the same calculation with a distribution. Okay, distribution costs money, that's no doubt. So let's just put any number on it. Let's just put like, hey, we have to do so much. We have to work like, we have to create all these modules, you know. Glenn, you know how much time it takes to create a distribution, you know. So, Let's just put 750,000 euros on creating the distribution. Seems to be a lot of money, but in comparison with the, what's gonna, what you're going to end up with, it's not very much. And then for all the websites that we are creating every single time, we only need to spend 2,500 euros on each website. So we have 300 websites times 2,500 euros. That's 750,000 euros. Then we have the initial cost of the distribution and having maybe a, a somebody maintaining that distribution and taking care of it, and that will result in 1.5 million euros, which means it leaves us with 1.5 million euros, which is a lot of money in a governmental space, for example, and in any enterprise, of course. So this is, seems really clear, like, why are we not doing that? Why are we not just all doing exactly this if we have this problem, that we have very many projects? So it is not only about the cost. It is also about freeing resources for innovation. And it is also about using this 2,500 euros to do something for the project itself, to the website. You know, make some awesome front end with uh, React. You know, do something really cool and use the money on that. Don't use the money on doing the stuff that you're doing again and again and again. So we can even like, then we can calculate, and this is what we do. We calculate with the client. We say like, okay, let's take the 2,500 and let's hire that up. So like, make that a little bit larger portion on the top. You know, then you even have more money to, to, you know, to have your departments play with and do something awesome. But it is not only about freeing, like getting less, having less cost, uh, freeing resources for innovation in your company but it's also about having your employees happier and very much less uh, burnout, for example, because if they have to only focus on one single technology, it's definitely easier than having to deal with the problem that I showed you before. And of course, the risk for an IT, and now coming up the, the EU uh, governor, like the compliance laws and all the data protection, um, of course, this is also very important that that is just all part of your basic distribution. So they don't have to start doing that again and again. And some people, some agencies do it bad and others do it differently. And then, you know, the IT is trying to maintain that and can't uh, do that. So this is then the question that comes up every single time. Here, yeah, but we already paid the three million. So how do we solve that? Well, it's not like that we are going to be taking all of the 300 websites and create uh, and put them into the distribution. That would be madness. So what we're going to do, we're going to create the distribution as the first thing we're going to do. We're going to work together with a team. We are going to find out what the layers are. And then every single new project that is going to come, is going to be put on the distribution. And that is how we're going to do it. So slowly from now, you are going not to spend three million next time because we all know that the web projects, they live not longer than maybe maximum five years. So they anyhow have to 
be done and again and again. So we already have maybe 25 websites that we can just start on doing right now because they have to be done anyways. So basically, it is still a pitch. We are asking for a lot of money now to create a distribution to, of course, save money later. But the good thing about Drupal 8 is that it is upgradable. It has no end. And this is one of the big things that we use in our, OK, I said that I'm not going to talk about Drupal 8 in the beginning, but I have to say this one thing, that it has no end. So Drupal 7 will have an end um, where it's not being maintained, but Drupal 8 and on will continue. So for enterprises, this is also a very good uh, tool to start using. This is though possibly a problem that we are always seeing, is that we are possibly asking them to kick out their favorite vendors. And they are already use, you know, using a lot of web agency that they love working with. And these web agencies don't necessarily write code in PHP, nor like Drupal. Um, there we have to work a lot with the client, we have to offer a lot of training, we have to create a lot of documentation of how to use this so they can still work with, it, with, with their vendors. And that is very important. It will never work that I come in there and say like, hey guys, I'm going to take care of it all and I'm going to take all the 300 websites that are out there for the rest of the world. We know that too. So we really like, tell them that we are going to help you. You know, we are going to take care of your distribution. We are going to help you with that stuff. And we are even going to enable you to work with the best front-end company and the best company that does the integration to whatever system they're using. So that is really important in the pitch to tell them this, that we are not, or that is not our mission that we're going to throw everything out. We are just going to make sure that your basic stack, technology stack, is just under control. And we are going to help you to save money there. So therefore, the bottom line, as, I, as this is a very short session, and, and normally, often, you also have a very short pitching time, so this was my pitch. You just have to say, we have lower cost, less risk, and happier employees. And I can ensure, assure you that this is going to make the sale. Like, they are going to believe that, because it is also true. And this is being done now uh, all over. Um, I talked to earlier about open ADU distribution for the higher education made by ImageX Media here, um, Glenn. Uh, we have the DECO for the government now, and we see the commerce guys. So there's, this is being done a lot now in Drupal. Uh, and Thunder with, uh, with the Burda Media. So I encourage you just to look at that. And also use that when you are promoting and you're trying to convince the clients to go this way. So. Just a little advice in the end that came also up in this Boston user group on the 5th of September. It's a good friend, uh, Mike Miles, who also came to the Drupal camp in Iceland. He said two things that are really important. So number one, if you want to build a distribution, you need to remember that you're not building a single site. You need to abstract your problems and solutions so they work for many sites. You have to think about that, and you have to build your distribution that way. You can't just focus on this one site. So, and the next is that if you're building a distribution, you will probably deal with very many different teams. And they have different expertise and priorities. So not everything is a need to have. So try to get the teams to think in terms of brand, best practices, and guidelines when describing the functionality they are looking for. And this is a lot of work. This is probably the biggest challenge you have, is to convince them all to that not everything is necessary and try to put that stuff maybe up to the top layer that we looked at before. So that is, I think I have already, I think five minutes. So I, was, I made it. Um, yeah, questions. Yes, please. And could you maybe come here because of the, otherwise I will repeat your question. Because they have to record it all. Hi. Hi. I have a question. I'm actually, uh, I guess one of you, uh, not yours, but I'm saying just a person that uses Drupal. Our business has over 64 websites, plus because we keep acquiring companies. 
Um, and then we have this, we're working in 7.5 right now. We are actually trying to get money for the upgrade for Drupal 8. Now, we are converting, we have over 22 websites already in 7.5, and we're trying to get to this, yes. right? So as part of that, and, and what you were saying is totally right, trying to, even though we're a Fortune 100 company in the United States, we still struggle getting money. I'm part of the digital marketing, I'm, I'm the head of the digital marketing. So my question is this, when you put in, can you put in back that slide where you had the buckets? This one. No, the buckets where you had like the definition on the bottom. Yeah, right there, base theme and all that. So uh, when you were saying that there's nice to haves and they're the ones that we truly need, would you say that these buckets are kind of like the foundation of when it comes to functionality? Yeah. And then when you add new ones, you just add additional buckets within? Yeah, well, we try to fit them into the buckets. So we try like, um, and this is most likely the context layer then where we start to like put your your business into like what is alike. And if we think about the city of Reykjavik, you know, we have the kindergartens, they are pretty similar and they have same API integrations. And then right. you have the, the schools and we put them and then we start creating that modules in the context layer. And then on top, that is just very site specific module. And how did Aquia help you get there? What? Sorry? The Aquia, which is the partner that yeah. you have for Dubai. <clears throat> yeah, so we are using Aquia Lightning, and they just come with a lot of, uh, for example, in media, uh, they have a lot of stuff done already that we are just using. And this is also open source. Right. So the, the, the Drupal 8 and the, the Aquia Lightning is open source products, and there are very many agencies that are using Aquia Lightning as their base when they start creating websites. And we just pack this together and we put on the correct modules how we like it and they have already done this configuration for us, partly. And they are also maintaining and making sure that the media, for example, is just working out of the box. And that's a challenge that we have often been having, that every single time you have to, you know, there comes a new module and then you put in this module or, you know, and we just use that as a base and, uh, and work from there on. And the base could be then, you know, the same, I know, in an open EDU uh, distribution, they are also using the same, same uh, base as we are. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I hope it answered the question. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Yes, please. Can you go to the microphone? Yeah, thank you. We as a Drupal building company have often the problem that um, customers um, have very special wishes for modules or other contrib uh, yeah. things um, which are not really sellable to other customers. Yes. Um, this is not really fitting in your plan to um, build everything you do um, for the uh, cluster of your whole customership. So how do you deal with this problem? You have to, you have to make a really good decision. Where does it fit in this? Here, um, at the moment, like what, what we have been doing with DECOF, then we are basically open sourcing the bottom two, um, which means that that part is just something that when there comes a wish, we look at it and we have experts of people who then decide if it is a good, good thing to put in the, the distribution that is open source or not. Just like, actually, just like we do it in the Drupal project, the same procedures, the same way. And then you go to the next level and you start thinking about, does it make sense for this level or not? And then it always ends up then in the, in the top layer, which then can grow, you know, but at least you have saved the, the 2.5 times three, you already saved that. And then you just can use at least that money. You can even use 10,000 euros then to do the top one, which is then awesome. Cool. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Any more questions? Good, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can at any time come, feel free. Uh, I'm probably walking around here. And uh, yeah, just come and talk to us. <laughs>